Hey guys, Brian delivers you the goods here. I'm returning to you tonight for a album review, and this is going to be for Dream Theater's The Astonishing Album Review before I get to the next video or whatever, and it'll be for a throwback movie review that I'm going to schedule for a certain time tonight. Uh, so I'm going to discuss what I listened to, what I know I listened to earlier today before I had to go do some stuff because I had to spend time with family t today, so I was a little busy for the past few hours. So, yeah, and I'll let you know what I thought of this uh, album, The Astonishing, their 2016 album by Dream Theater. So let's dive into this review. Now, like I said, I'm sorry that I had to delay this review a bit. I didn't post anything saying that I was going to delay it, but it's going to be out uh, pretty soon, so yeah. I enjoyed this album. I thought uh, the first act was eh, alright. It was average at best, but the second act really grabbed a hold of me and didn't let me go, meaning it intrigued me a lot more. The first act did have some good songs, like the instrumental dystopian overture was really good, the gift of music was great, Descent of the Nomax, Nomax instrumental, really good instrumental to start off the album. The answer I just wasn't feeling for that much, so I'd give it a solid 4.5 out of 5 in my opinion. A Better Life was a really outstanding song. Lord Nefarious, uh, I believe is how you pronounce it. Nefarious, or however you pronounce it. Um, that was a really good song. A Savior in the Square was really good. I gave that a 5 out of 5. I'm just trying to breeze through all 34 songs. Which, this was a 2 hour and 10 minute album. And I was like, fuck, I'm in for a long album. I've heard longer. I think the longest I've heard was the Linkin Park Hybrid Theory 20th Anniversary Edition album. That consisted of 80 songs for four and a half hours. And I was like, fuck, I'm in for a long album. It took me a while to finish that album when I reviewed it last year. But there were a lot of good songs from it. Um, yeah, When Your Time Has Come was pretty nice, and Act of Faith, I believe is what it is, um, not my favorite song, but it's alright, so 4.5 out of 5 for me on that one, and Three Days was not bad either, I just wasn't feeling for James Labrie singing in certain songs on the first act of the Astonishing album, so, yeah, um, The Hovering Sojourn, no Max Instrumental was really good. Brother Can You Hear Me was very good. I give those two songs a 5 out of 5. Um, a Life Left Behind is really good too. Raven's Kill was really good. And Chosen was really good too. So those four songs I mentioned from 12 to 15 are getting 5 out of 5s. Then comes A Tempting Offer and... I just wasn't feeling for James Labrie singing in that song that much. I don't know, it just... There were some moments where it was good, and moments where it was iffy. Like, I was uncertain what to think of it. But, 4.5 out of 5 for me. Digital Discord had a weird instrumental uh, for the runtime it went for. So, 4.5 out of 5 for me for that last one. Uh, and 18 through 20 is getting 5 out of 5s. The X Aspect, A New Beginning, and The Road to Revolution. So for a score for the first act, I'd give it a 7.5 out of 10. It was average. It wasn't terrible. So it's not a bad listen. Um, now comes the second act, and then I'll get to the actual rating for this whole album. Um... 2285 on trait on I believe is on track day. Um it was an instrumental, but it was 
pretty good for what it went for. So, 5 out of 5 for me. Moment of Betrayal was like a 6 minute song. And I enjoyed James LeBree's vocals in that song. So, pretty good stuff. 5 out of 5 for that one too. Heaven's Cove. Uh, pretty good song. And then comes Begin Again. And for track number three, I'd give it a five out of five. It was a pretty good song. Begin Again had some moments where James LeBree's vocals was starting to sound cringy, in my opinion. So, yeah, I just wasn't sure if I was feeling for the melody or James LeBree singing in it. So, 4.5 out of five for me on that one. Uh, I'm just a little uncertain what to think of it. But The Path That Divides was a pretty good song. I really enjoyed it. Machine Chatter, No Max Instrumental, was really good too. Uh, a lot of weirdness in that song, and the melody was weird too. So I was really digging it. The Walking Shadow, not my personal favorite song, but it it's fine for what it is. So 4.5 out of 5 for me on that. My last farewell, the beginning was going slow. Then it picks up towards the middle and towards the end of the song, and it did pretty good. So 5 out of 5. Losing Faith was a very outstanding song. So 5 out of 5 for me on that. Whispers on the Wind was starting off slow, but I can understand why it was a slow song, because it wasn't really long. So, 5 out of 5 for me on that one. And the last four tracks, Hymn of a Thousand Voices was not bad. It was the final not bad song, so I give that a score of a 4.5 out of 5. Our New World was good. It does have a different version with Lizzie Hale in it from Hailstorm. So, I do want to hear that version of it, too. And Power Down, No Max Instrumental was very good. And the final track, Astonishing, what an epic way to end of an album. So, for two hours and ten minutes, this album did pretty good. I personally love it. Um, sure, the first act has its problems. It's a pretty good album. It's just, I wouldn't call it really good. But, it's pretty good for what it is. Uh, so, Act 2 rating is getting an 8.5 out of 10, so... Overall, I think the whole Astonishing uh, album is a pretty good listen. Highly recommend you check it out if you haven't listened to it yet. I just had to talk about all 34 songs that I listened to, breeze through it as quick as I could, and then get to my final rating for the album itself. So, yeah, for a score, I'm going to give the Astonishing album... An 8.5 out of 10 by Dream Theater. This was a pretty good album. Like I said, I highly recommend you check it out. Uh, it was a good listen. But it was very fucking long. So if you can handle 2 hours and 10 minutes of an album, then you might enjoy this album a lot. But it is a pretty long album. It's the longest album in their discography. So, yeah. And it's the 13th studio album, too. And next, I'll be doing the Distance Over Time re-review on Tuesday. So, you'll see that coming out soon. Uh, in just a day and a half or so. So, definitely tune in for that. Comment below. Let me know what you guys thought of the Dream Theater album. The Astonishing, if you've heard it. And if you like this album review I made for you guys late tonight comment below and let me know your thoughts on it tap like on this video if you liked it subscribe to my channel if you can to support the channel i will be returning to you for another review and it'll be for the scary movie oh crap i just uh, it's a uh, it's gonna be for scary movie 2 for the throwback movie review so you'll be seeing that soon i might just start re recording it and I just had an oh crap moment. I was like, I shouldn't have mentioned that. Yes, that's the movie I'm reviewing. But I won't spoil any more throwback movie reviews. From now on, I'll make sure that I surprise you guys with that news.
So, I'm very sorry that I spoiled it. <laughs> I didn't mean to. Uh, it just slipped out. I was like, fuck, I just said it, and I shouldn't have said it. But, yeah, that's the movie review I'm reviewing for the throwback movie review, so stay tuned for that recording video. And it's going to be having a premiere tonight, so tune in for that. I hope you enjoyed this long album review for Dream Theater, the astonishing album. I did the best I could to make it as good as possible. And, yeah, I'll have another review tomorrow for Insane Clown Posse with their album Yum Yum Bell Gum or whatever it's called. I have to look at it again. Uh, Bedlam. It's Bedlam, I meant to say. So stay safe, take care, have a great rest of your Halloween night, and I'll see you soon in the next review.